Good evening, everybody. In accordance with the open meeting law, the board states for the record that this meeting is being recorded by NORCAM and may be recorded by other local media. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. It's, a, it's, exciting e uh, it, it's an exciting evening for North Reading. Um, first thing on our agenda is uh, oh, actually public comment. So we're going to first start with that. Is anybody here for public comment? And if somebody comes in later, we can go ahead and back, come back to it. But we're going to start the evening off with giving a little update on the sale of 104 Lowell Road. Put together a little presentation. I also asked some committee members, some supporting staff, and outside support consultants to join us this evening as we went through this presentation. It's been uh, an amazing two years, as we believe it or not, it's been two years that we've been discussing this uh, and trying to get this transaction completed over on 104 Lower Road. You can go to the first slide. So I thought I'd start off with just kind of giving a little, for the f folks that are listening at home, just a little reminder of sort of the you know, 104 Low Road, 102 Low Road, and how it all came about. So back in December 2015, we entered into an agreement with the Department of Capital Asset Management and Maintenance with the state to take over the property, acquire the two parcels, using what they call the sale partnership model. And the sale partnership model had some incentives in there. So initial, initially what the agreement is that we sell the property, we split it 50-50. But with the incentives in there, we could have a range from 50% up to 70%. And in the winter of 2016, the town went through an RFP process and we brought on a real estate consultant firm, which is TRA Advisors, and Mr. Fran DeCoste, who's here with us this evening, has been with us from the beginning of the process and it's been a wonderful partnership with him and his firm. And um, without them, I don't know if we would be where we are today. So, but we'll go through that as we continue through this presentation. In 2016, the Economic Development Committee, which members are here this evening, and I appreciate them showing up, uh, we went through an RFP process, or d designed an RFP, which this board approved, and we got it on the street, and we went through that process, and uh, we got that out in September of 2016. And through TRA spearheading that effort, we had an industry night where the Potential bidders could come in, ask questions, get some more information. And then with the deadline was in November of 2016, where we were able to get the proposals in. And then the EDC reviewed those proposals. And we used a process that was managed by TRA. And we received five proposals. And we evaluated them. And then in December uh, 29th of 2016, the EDC made a selection to go with the Pulte, to accept the Pulte Homes $30 million cash offer for 450 for sale age restricted units. And the Board of Selectmen and the CPC jointly concurred with that proposal in January of 2017. Excellent. And this is just a quick snapshot of what Pulte Homes is going to build, and this is how it's going to lay out. So you can see off here to the north, you got the Lowell Road. Michael, if you could just show the Lowell Road, that's the existing road today. That's over here, is further down, you'll see the little white line, that's the existing um, way in today. That's going to be an emergency entrance and exit. The main entrance is going to be right here where you come in for Edgewood today. And instead, you're going to be turning into the new project. And as you go around, it's going to circle around and right the first building on your right as you enter is going to be their community center. And that's going to be the first building they're going to build is the one that's closest to Lowell Road, which is behind it. And then the area in the, f the green grassy area is going to be their leaching area for their waste water facility, which is down here way in the back. And that's pretty much it in a summary. So just to remind everybody, as we went through this, and one of the reasons why we selected the Pulte Home option was we felt that it gave this town the best financial benefit. 
you know, with the cash offer, it gave us the uh, opportunity to have the biggest potential to fund some of our future growth opportunities and infrastructure needed. And the net proceeds we, we knew would be somewhere between 16 million and 19 million. And we knew that the proceeds from this sale could only be used for capital investments and actually pay down on some debt if we elected to do that. This particular opportunity also gave, looked at, we looked at it from a tax perspective, we'll generate, once this is fully built out, as you just saw up on the board, which could be between the next four to five years, over $3 million in new revenues for the town. And it will have the minimal, a very minimal impact, if any at all, on our school system, since it's an age-restricted 55 and older. And I think the nice thing about it, too, is it gives us an opportunity to potentially use those funds, those proceeds, to invest in things to help us make investments that could generate even more revenue in other areas to help stabilize our tax rate going forward. And the nice thing, too, is having about 1,000 new people living right here on Lowell Road with such cl close proximity to Route 28, to now we have more people shopping in our stores and in our restaurants and so on. So there's a very... Uh, big positive. So the final transaction, and there was a lot of work over the last year getting to that date, but the final transaction actually took place on this Friday, December 1st, and under the sale partnership model, we had a 5% incentive to be able to sell this property within two years of the agreement with DCAM, as you saw in my first slide. So we beat that deadline by one day, and I want to thank Pulte Homes for working so hard with us to meet that deadline, because that was another $1.5 million um, that was at risk if we didn't meet that uh, deadline. So the purchase price, again, was $30 million cash sale, and that went through on December 1st. Under that sale partnership model, the net proceeds <coughs> for the town came out to $20 million. The state received $8.997 million. So we both made out, I think, um, pretty well in this, in this opportunity. We are expecting us. <laughs> 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 we have lots of people that already spent us too, but you know, 14 times over. So, you know, the, the, the project is consistent with the board's strategic plan, trying to find housing opportunities for our seniors that want to stay in town and to get in something that's a little more, um, less uh, maintenance and affordable. That's, you know, considerably, but not, maybe not at the affordable range, but at least something considerable. But at least gives us another option, 450 <laughs> units for them to consider. Next slide, please. So I just wanted to take the opportunity this evening. That's why I asked a lot of people to come this evening. It's because I think there has to be, uh, on this board and myself personally, a lot of recognition and appreciation shown for what it took for us to get where we actually are today. And it starts with uh, Senator Tarr accepting uh, my request to come up and meet with uh, him and Representative Jones uh, to, to meet with the right people and what we can do with that property because it just sat out there idle for so long and we knew the Gutierrez had given up on that property so it was a great opportunity for us to resurrect some uh, thought and uh, constructive conversation about what we could actually do with it and having the benefit of the sale partnership model that was recently created under the DCAM uh, it just, the timing was perfect for us. And again, Representative Jones and Senator Tyre, I cannot thank you enough for your opportunity. And I want to take this opportunity to give you guys a big hand. We did invite the folks from DCAM to join us this evening. Unfortunately, they couldn't make it, but I have a little letter that I'll come back to that at the end, if that's okay. Um, also, I want a, a big thank you to Secretary Jay Ash, who uh, he's the Secretary for the Housing and Economic Development, and he came here to the board and spent some time with us. He drove around town, we showed him the parcels around town, and he was the one that gave us a lot of advice and really told us to reconsider the opportunity for housing on that project rather than just look at it as a, a commercial-only property. Um, and his advice turned out to be uh, pretty well worth it. So we want to thank him for the time that he's taken and the advice and the guidance he's given us all along the way over the last two years. And so a big thank you to him. And my board members, uh, without them, without their support through the process, uh, supporting everything that Michael and his staff and, and uh, Danielle and everything they were doing, uh, so it was really a board effort. 
uh, they're constantly asking questions, constantly challenging the process to make sure that the town was getting the best deal possible and, and making sure that it fit within the strategic plan for the town. So I want to thank my board members for all you've done. Also a big thank you to the town, town um, the voters that came at town meeting. You know, getting folks to come up for a special town meeting isn't that easy. And we had a great turnout. We had great support. We did have some people that didn't particularly like the, what we selected to do out there. But I think over time, hopefully, we can win them over when they see what great things we can do with those proceeds. So I want to thank the voters of the town. I, wanted, I asked the CPC members to be here because we jointly did this with them. But they also had a big role in it by helping us get the permits in place for Pulte. They were able to pull together the expedited permitting, get the team together with all the other town departments. So I want to take a minute to thank you. <laughs> Special thank you to Daniel McKnight. It really tireless effort. Thank you very much. I only see a couple of my EDC members here, but you know the work they did was early in the process. They they were really the ones that got down and did all the real difficult work, getting those RFPs written right. We went over and we challenged each other, and I think our success shows now in the reward. So thank you to the EDC members. <laughs> our Conservation Commission and our Board of Health, uh, behind the scenes, making sure that the right permitting was completed and make sure that DP had everything they needed from us. So I want to thank them and all the other departments, especially Michael Gilberto, your staff, uh, Jane and Karen, I know behind the scenes, all the phone calls, all the paperwork, um, you know, it, goes, it doesn't go unnoticed. So I want to thank you as well. Thank you. <laughs> Even though they're not here this evening, we should take an opportunity to thank the DP, MEPA, uh, DOT, all the other uh, acronym letters that were out there because it's amazing what we were able to do in a two-year period. When we tell people we were able to get DEP approval in MEPA within months of Pulte submitting, there was working groups, and Brad, thank you for influencing us a little bit behind the scenes, keeping people motivated to make a quick decision on this. It was a no-brainer um, in a lot of cases. Those are our toughest ones to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, with it, the property sat idle for so many years and undisturbed. You know, all the work that was done years in the past, we were able to leverage off of that, and a lot of that was from the support of uh, Representative Jones. And so I want to thank the DP and the MEPA especially uh, for their quick reaction to this. Um, I asked John, uh, Jonathan Eichmann to come in tonight because without him, we would not have gotten this deal done. Uh, truly, day and night, taking away from his family time, constantly phone calls from Michael, myself, from everybody, and John, honestly, on behalf of the board and everyone else. But not least, our town administrator. Wow, this guy's a champion. So thank you, Mike. <laughs> because of this deal, but it's going to pay dividends, and we want to thank her for her sacrifice for you being out of home and take this opportunity to make sure you take some time before your next child comes. Michael's due to have a baby here in April, so uh, he, he needs to take some time and take care of his family. But, he got this done, so you can go ahead and do that now. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you. So if we could take a picture opportunity, we have some a toast up here. It's apple. It's, it's not liquor. It is apple cider. And I'd like everybody to come up and grab a glass. I'd like to stand up here if we could, get a toast of all of us, um, toasting towards the sale, and, and show the community that this is a big success. So please, if everybody could grab a glass. Oh, yes. You want Maybe to say before we gather yeah. everybody, I think I, I, I'm, I'm probably speaking for the same thing that all the other board members are going to say as well, and so I can defer to them. But um, it, it was your drive that, that got us here. Your uh, drive. I can remember an email when I was uh, working for the town of Tingsboro from you telling me about the sale partnership model um, uh, when I was preparing to start here in August of 2014 what you guys were looking to do. And I think we met with Mary Beth Clancy and Brad's office and Bruce's office my first week here. Mm -hmm. And it was clear that we had a tremendous opportunity back then in August of 2014. And I don't think any of us really knew what that opportunity could lead us to and how many different goals it could help us to achieve. But here we are. Yeah. And uh, you, you drove it every day. For, for three years. I apologize. And, uh, no, no, it was all, all good. It was all good. When, when we needed guidance on behalf of your other board members, you made yourself available for 
Um, I tried to count, but I lost count. It's dozens of conference calls, meetings, morning, noon, and night. And uh, I just think it needs to be recognized how much time and effort you put into this. Pleasure. Thank you. Representative Jones have a, a word or two. I'm going to pass the microphone down to Yeah, you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to spare you. Thanks, Steve. Um, I would say Mike was passed. Um, um, but you know what? This has been, this is a great success. Uh, this is uh, the product of many hands, um, many meetings, many calls, many texts. Um, Mike and Mike, neither of whom shy or reticent about contacting the office. I'm glad we could play some small part in trying to move this forward, either by facilitating a meeting, facilitating a phone call. Uh, I am pleased DEP moved a little faster than maybe historically they might on something like this. Um, and I think that was because, you know, we've done a lot of work over the years and we, we kept some good records and were able to point to some things. Uh, so this is a, this is a great uh, success story for the town, uh, and, but as I was joking with Steve about obviously the state's already spent their portion, um, it creates um, a great opportunity and responsibility for the town because things like this don't come along in all communities ever uh, and come along very few times in other communities, and this is a, a, one of those rare opportunities. So it's going to be up to um, the boards uh, to make uh, an informed and <coughs> enlightened and hopefully long-lasting uh, decision. Uh, or decisions with this uh, with these proceeds that we'll, we'll, I'm sure we'll be getting uh, as it becomes more known uh, a number of questions about how did you come up with that deal and how did that get structured and so forth and so on uh, so this is a, a great win for the town and, and hopefully it'll be the foundation for other successes uh, down the road thank you Mr. thank chairman. you thank you Mr. just for say mr. chairman the you know this is actually big again Maybe when you were on the board way back when, too. But I go, I go back to when we got the first piece of land, that's the Mullen Park. Right, right which is Mullen Park. So like in 1991 or even before, 1990, we, were, we asked for a seat at the table with the state as to the disposition of the J.T. Berry Center. And uh, uh, I think they gave us a chair at the table, but not much say. Uh, but over the, years, well over the years, you know, over the years, um, through the persistence of former board members, Representative Jones, um, Senator Buell, Senator Tarr, uh, previously uh, working with us trying to get things facilitated uh, but the thing that really changed was over the last three four five years was the state's uh, recognition that you know they had an awful lot of property out there that they weren't doing much with and maybe it would be a good idea to partner with the communities you know which was the sale partnership model and uh, it really came to fruition under the Baker administration um, you know, maybe started on the Patrick, but on the Baker administration really came to fruition. And uh, this is a prime example as to what can be done. And my guess is probably a model mm -hmm. as to uh, how things will be done going forward. So it's, uh, you know, a good testament to the persistence on the part of this board, in particular because this is one where it really happened, um, members here, and, but prior board members too in their persistence. And our representation at the state level has been unwavering. Uh, as far as uh, trying to get us assistance here and not threatening to, to get something which is going to bring a, a benefit to the community. And let me tell you, it's changed over the years with the CPC joining with us to change the zoning, you know, work with our professionals that we hired to, you know, what's the highest and best use. Jay Ash coming out here and, you know, giving us a dope slap and say, you know, why aren't you looking at it? You should be looking at this. This is what the market is. Yeah, otherwise, you're going to end up sitting in this thing for another 20 years or another generation. Um, and, and again, to your persistence, Mr. Chairman, you know, you help shepherding this thing through and not giving up on it. It's paid off, and uh, thank you. Too bad we don't get a cut. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, but again, to represent, you know, Representative Jones, uh, you know, untiring effort. Um, his facilitation of all yeah. of this was key, key. and uh, we really appreciate it. Yeah, really thank you very much. Thank you. And congratulations thank you. to all. Any other board members? <clears throat> We're good. I wanted. To, I do want to take the opportunity to go to the last slide. I'm glad I, I didn't forget. I would like to read the letter from DCAM if we could. It's a little small for me, so I'm gonna to try to hold it out here and read it the best I can. Dear Chairman Prisco and members of the board, congratulations on the closing of the former JT Berry property with Pulte Homes of New England. Unfortunately, we could not attend tonight's meeting, but we celebrate this win with all. This is a significant achievement for you, the town and the Commonwealth, as we calibrate, I'm sorry, collaborate on the first closing of sale partnership land mall. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read this here. First closing of a sale partnership land sale. In addition to the revenue generated by this sale, the Pulte Homes Development Plan 
will be great benefit to seniors in the town and region. We would like to especially acknowledge the partnership formed with the town administrator, Michael Gilberto, and the town planner, Danielle McKnight, who worked so diligently on the town's behalf. We look forward to continuing benefits, continued benefits this project will offer at full build out. Best regards, Carol Gladstone, Commissioner Decan. North Red, I cannot read the. North, North Reading has, has set, set the, the standard, standard of performance in the sale partnership model. Congrats. Ah, thank you. I'm getting blind. <laughs> oh yeah, I can, I can read it up there a lot better. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm getting there, unfortunately. But now, if we could just take a moment, grab a glass, mm -hmm. let's toast, let's get a great picture, something that we can uh, put in the history history books, and maybe it'll go up um, to the. And but someday we'll be in the library. <laughs> oh, Liz, come on. If we could get everybody, uh, Maureen, how do you want us to stand? Some behind the table, some in front of the table? How do you want us to go? Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Tall people in the back, back. back, short people in the front. Got it. Short yes. people in the back. Yes. And maybe we could put the slide to, um, to um, <laughs> China, China, China. To the landscape. Yes. Do you want the plot plan? Can we put the slide to the plot plan? Chris, do you want to, uh, we got a sippy cup for you and your hand. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, wait, okay. Then you here. <laughs> hey, you grab one? I, have no yeah, thank you. I think everybody came behind the table. Brad, yeah, would we you mind uh, standing right, 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 right in the middle of the front? And we'll bring you, I'll bring you a glass. I'm always good for a glass. Okay. Just say it's apple juice. See the screen? Can we use that as a base? Board uh, members. Do you want the board members up front? They want us up front, Bob. Up front? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's not many that could be in the back. You need to be in the front. Man. You need to be in the front. Man. Because your height challenge. So am I when you, when you got these guys. Yeah, <laughs> Yes. Are we going to be behind the chairs? Yeah. Is that going to work? I'm going to sit on the chair. Oh, you're going to be looking down. Should we shut the projector off? I didn't get yeah, you. I didn't no, get you. Leave, no, leave, we're going to be wrong, right? Okay. Okay. Why better? It's going to be on okay. Mike's face. What's the map? Can we all see these people stand together? Can you say it? Where, where are they? Oh, right wait a minute. Let me move over. <laughs> CPC together. Right here. Right here. Just the three of us. Yeah. All right. Okay, I don't know who everybody is. I don't know who Jane. Jane. Who is Jane? we got to get her in here. That might be the only anyway. seat for us. Jane, Rich. Okay. Uh, uh, who are you? Okay. Rich, you should put yourself Rich. in here. Rich, come on over here with us. Okay. Rich, over here on the you other side of the series. You're a, what, you want? There's plenty of rules. He's a license holder. Go over there with Bob. Oh, okay. Well, okay. He's in a toaster list. No, he's not involved in this. No. I'm <laughs> keeping a watchful eye on steak so apple juice. Get you need to have a, have a short <laughs> step ladder in here. You know, that's all it's true. <laughs> she doesn't like it. This is not one of those. Not looking happy. We squeeze. squeeze together. I know. You're all happy, right? Yeah. We're very happy. Wait until you get this thing. I don't want to do that. Shall I put you back? All right. Okay. You can put your glasses up. So salute. What are you saying? Cheers. 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 <laughs> They're cheap pictures, right? Yeah, 20 million. <laughs> 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 so we should say. You want us to scoot down a little bit? Steve and Danielle switch. Switch. Nice. Okay, now we got 
That's right. Oh, Miss Lightfoot. That's right. <laughs> Get him in there. <laughs> Cheers, Miss Danielle. Fine China. Fine China. But he never texted me back. So I tried texting Joe. I called Joe. Here. You know, I've sent some people on the way. By the way, we pay for $72,000. Well, I, 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 I thought you would send it there. I just checked. I just checked. Right. I knew you were going to realize. Now look at the good part. Come on. Thank you because you guys gave us the money and we needed it. I meant to put you on. Yeah, I can hold the money again. How are you doing? Very good. Okay. Again, thank you, everyone. I, I did forget one organization to mention, um, and that was FinCom. As we were coming down to the final days, uh, we didn't have enough money in our budget to uh, finish out the cost to do, finish the transaction. So FinCom had allowed us uh, to transition some money out of their budgets to help us get to the closing. So I meant, I wanted, that's why I asked FinCom to come this evening, and I am sorry I missed to put them on this list of thank yous. But FinCom, without your last minute jumping in there and funding our transaction, uh, we wouldn't have been able to get it done without you either. So thank you. And, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So CPC, I'll leave you with this as we um, break to get into the next part of the agenda, is that now we have a lot of work to do. We have a great opportunity to have a lot of conversation amongst our two committees and boards to uh, decide what we, what's the best use of that money. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people around town have already spent it, as oh, you yeah. probably have heard. Uh, but we will work together, and I look forward to that continued conversation to collectively make the right decision that's in the best interest of the future of the town. So we look forward to doing that with you. So thank you, everybody. And uh, if you, you're welcome to stay as we go through uh, the lovely minutes. And uh, the other, other, Otherwise, you go and watch the Celtics, the Bruins, are Dancing with the Stars. And Monday Night Football. And Monday Night Football. Which is yeah. going to be a very good game. But I think, uh, you know, this is probably more exciting. Yeah. yeah. But thank you. <laughs> All right. And representing, thank you. It's true. 8.30 morning. 8.15. At John, John's office. Okay. Next on the agenda, minutes, November 20th, 2017, regular in executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 20, 2017 regular session minutes as written. You got a motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Executive session. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the November 20, 2017 executive session minutes as written. Second. You got a motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. Okay. Next, the legal bills. For October. Mr. Chairman, I move to approve legal bills for October 2007 in the amount of $9,997.29 as follows. Coltman and Page General, uh, $8,776.29. Coltman and Page Labor, $1,054.50. And the Nine Mill Street Acquisition, $166.50. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. 
I have a second. Any discussion? <coughs> Mr. O'Leary. No. Oh, sorry. oh, sorry. None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Signed bans and bonds. Mr. Chairman, I, Andrew Schultz, Clerk of the uh, Board of Selectmen of the Town of North Reading, uh, the, the Town, certified at a meeting of the Board held on December 4, 2017, of which all members of the Board were duly notified and which a quorum was present. The following votes were unanimously passed, all of which appear upon the official record of the Board uh, in my custody. Voted that we hereby determine in accordance with General Laws Chapter 70B the amount of the cost of renovation of the middle school construction of a new high school to create a new integrated middle high school project authorized by the Town passed on March 19, 2012, Article 1, excluded from the limitations of Proposition 2 and a half, so called, on March 21, 2012, Question 1, and March 13, 2013, Article 1, excluded from the limitations of Proposition 2 and a half, so called, on March 22, 2013, Question 1, not being paid by the school facilities grant is $93,945,770, and we hereby approve the issuance of notes and bonds in such amount under said General Laws Chapter 70B. Further voted that the sale of the, uh, the 4215000 general obligation municipal purpose loan of 2017 bonds to the town dated December 14, 2017, the bonds to Robert W. Baird and Company, Inc. at a price of $4,600,486.13 and accrued interest, if any, is hereby approved and confirmed. The bonds shall be payable on December 1 of the years and the principal amounts to bear interest in respective rates as follows. Uh, 2018, 580,000, 5%. 2019, 560,000, 5%. 2020, 545,000 at 5%. 2021, 365,000 at 5%. 2022, 355,000 at 5%. 2023, 340,000 at 5%. 2024, 325,000 at 5%. 2025, 320,000 at 5%. 2026, 110,000 at 3%. 2027, at 100,000 at 3%. Uh, 2029, 150,000 at 3%. 2030, 75,000 at 3%. 2031, 60,000 at 3%. 2032, 60,000 at 3%. 2033, 55,000 at uh, 3 and 1 eighths percent. 2034, 55,000 at 3 and 1 eighths percent. 2035, 55,000 at 3 and a quarter. 2036, uh, 55,000 at 3 and a quarter percent. In 2037, uh, 50,000 at uh, 3 and a quarter percent. Further voted that the bonds maturing on December 1, 2029, a term bond, shall be subject to mandatory redemption or mature or as follows. 2028, 75,000. 2029, 75,000. Further voted to approve the sale of a 751,500. Uh, dollars, uh, two percent general obligation at anticipation notes to the town dated December 15, 2017, and payable June uh, 14, 2018. The notes to Eastern Bank at par and accrued interest, if any, plus a premium of $25,168.04. Further voted that in conjunction with the marketing and the sale of the bonds, the preparation and distribution of the sale of preliminary official statement dated November 21, 2017. And a final official statement dated November 30, 2017, the official statement. Each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby ratif ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that in connection with the marketing and sale of these notes, the preparation and distribution of a notice, sale, and preliminary official statement dated November 21, 2017, and an official uh, statement dated November 30, 2017. Each in such form as may be approved by the town treasurer, be and hereby ratified, confirmed, approved, and adopted. Further voted that the bond shall be subject to redemption at the option of the town upon such terms and conditions as set forth in the official statement. Further voted that the town treasurer and board of select would be and hereby are authorized to execute and deliver continuing significant event disclosure undertakings in compliance with uh, SEC Rule 15C2-12 in such forms as may be approved by bond council to the town, which undertaking shall be incorporated by reference in the bonds and notes as applicable for the benefit of the holders of the bonds and notes from time to time. Further voted that we authorize and direct the treasurer to establish post-issuance federal tax compliance procedures in such form as the treasurer and bond council deem sufficient or if such procedures are currently in place <laughs> to, <coughs> to review and update said procedures in order to monitor and maintain tax-exempt status of the bonds and notes. 
Further voted that each member of the Board of Selectmen, the Town Clerk, and Town Treasurers be and hereby are authorized to take any and all such actions and execute, deliver such certificates, receipts, or other documents as may be determined by them or any of them to be necessary and convenient to carry into effect provisions of the foregoing votes. I further certify that the votes were taken at a meeting open to the public that no vote was taken by secret ballot. That I noticed stating the place, date, time, agenda for meeting. Which agenda included the adoption of these votes was followed the town clerk and council thereof posted in a manner conspicuously visible to the public at all hours on the municipal building that the town clerk is located or if applicable in accordance with an alternative method notice prescribed by the attorney general as set forth in 940 CMR 29-03. Uh, subsection 2, subsection lowercase b, at least 48 hours, not including Saturday, Sundays, and legal holidays prior to the time of the meeting and retained so posted at the time of the meeting. No such deliberations or decision in connection with the sale of the bonds or notes in executive session, all in accordance with Massachusetts General Laws, Chapter 33A, subsections 18 through 25, as amended. I'll second. <laughs> I'm not reading that again. Now you know why Kate gave it Are up. Are you sure they got this that at home? Rookie, rookie responsibilities. <laughs> <laughs> you paid your due this evening. So I have a motion, I have a second. Any discussion? Mr. Gilberto. Uh, I'd like to offer a comment relative to the rating. If you'd like me to do that now, if, I can. Yeah, th that would be appropriate. Yeah. Excellent, thank you. So um, in going out to the market for this borrowing, which was conducted last week, the town was called to participate in a rating of its debt. Not only this debt that we're issuing tonight, but debt that is also on the books um, as, of this, as, of this, uh, as of this issuance. And uh, we participated in a rating call with the treasurer, the finance director, and Mr. Chairman, yourself as well, as well as the human resources director and some other staff who um, are kind of tuned into the management team here of the town. And um, we, uh, we received news early last week uh, that Moody's had assigned uh, an AA2 rating to our existing debt and to our new debt issuance as well. And so they sustained our, our, our good rating at AA2. And I just would like to read uh, from some of the comments that they wrote in their summary rating rationale. Uh, Moody's Investor Service has assigned an AA2 rating to the town of North Reading, Massachusetts, 4.3 million general obligation municipal purpose loan of 2017 bonds. Concurrently, we maintain the AA2 rating on $83.6 million of outstanding general obligation debt. The AA2 rating incorporates a satisfactory and very stable financial position, healthy tax base with above average wealth and income levels, and moderate debt and pension liabilities. And these are things that they cited in determining that they would affirm our rating. Uh, I think that's a testament to the work that is done by our financial planning team, uh, to our finance director, who uh, Liz Rourke, who is seated before us here, and to Marianne McKay, our town treasurer, and also a reflection of the um, Advice and counsel we received from the Finance Committee, represented by Abby Hurlbut, seated to the rear there. So uh, again, some more good news received this week for the town. Um, we continue to have an eye towards looking forward to opportunities to, to even further improve that rating. Um, we know that that a, 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 can be a difficult challenge, but we also know we may have an opportunity to do so, and we'll continue to look at that moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Any more discussion? I'll take a, I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. We have some signing to do? Yes. Oh, look at that whole go. big packet. Huh? <coughs> no, if you don't mind, can we get it to you in the morning? So I figured while we're going through the other licenses, we can pass them around. There's one in here. Do you want the one? Um, if you Mr. Chairman, through you yes. to the town treasurer, do we need to have anything notarized for signature purposes? Um, Barbara will do that tomorrow. I already coordinated with Barbara. Okay. So Thank you. And, and there are the vans and the bonds. Okay. So now we're on to our license renewals. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following common victor licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Andrea's House of Pizza, Captain Pizza, China Cuisine, the Dunkin' Donuts, also known as Shauna Donuts, Ginger Gourmet, Horseshoe Cafe, Inc., Kitty's, <coughs> excuse me, Kitty's Restaurant, Mike's Famous Roast Beef and Pizza, Nan Center Cafe, North Reading Christopher Club, Papa Gino's, S&M Subway of North Reading, Starbucks Coffee, and the Hornet's Nest. 
Second. Have a motion, I have a second. Any discussion? Unheard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <coughs> Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following common victor all alcohol license to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. That would be China Cuisine, Ginger Gourmet Restaurant, Horseshoe Cafe Inc., and Kitty's Restaurant. Second. We have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following package store slash all alcohol licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. And that would be Eastgate Liquors. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following package store slash wine and malt beverage licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Convenience plus. Second. We have a second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following fraternal club licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. The North Reading Christopher Club. Second. A motion and a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Uh, class 1 license. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following Class 1 licenses to expire January 1, 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Uh, that would be Brian Duchak, DBA National Sales, North Reading Motorsports, and Melconian Subaru. Can you repeat those again? Uh, Brian uh, Duchak, DBA National Sales, North Reading Motorsports, and Melconian Subaru. Thank you. I have a second? Okay. Second by Ms. Minupelli and Mr. O'Leary. Mr. Chairman, I will be recusing myself from any discussion and or uh, voting on this particular matter because a Class 1 license also, by virtue of the Class 1, holds a Class 2 license. I have a family member that holds, currently holds a Class 2 license, so I will be abstaining from the vote. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Any other? Do we have any issues with this? Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None in one abstention. One abstention. Let the show, please. Next. Uh, class 2 licenses. Uh, Mr. Chairman, before I read this motion, I do have a conflict of interest for Route 28 Motors, as I've represented them prior to being on the board as an attorney. So with the, with the chair's permission, I'd like to uh, move on the other two class 2 licenses first. Then I will recuse myself for the other portion. Perfect. So, Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following Class II licenses to expire January 1, 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. a and Motors, Inc., and Brian Dushak, DBA, National Sales. I have a motion and a second. Okay, Mr. Chairman. Yes. And again, uh, this is a vote on a Class II license. I have a family member that currently holds a Class II license in the town of North Reading, so I will be abstaining. Uh, uh, on the vote, and I will not be participating in any discussion. Okay. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Okay. I have a motion and a second. And any more discussion? None heard. So this was uh, AJ Motors and Brian Duchak doing business at National Sales. Correct. That's it. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? And. I'll be abstaining. And one abstention. And Mr. Chair, I'm going to recuse myself for the Route 28 portion of this uh, motion. You got it. And again, I too, Mr. Chairman, uh, will not be participating in any discussion regarding the, the motion which will be before us, and uh, will not. And I will be abstaining. Thank you. 
for the same stated reasons. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Mrs. Mignapelli, if you wouldn't mind reading the motion. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following Class II licenses to expire January 1st. 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. AJ Motors Inc., Brian Dushak, DBA National Sales, Nika Inc., DBA Route 28 Motors Exchange. Second. I have a motion and a second. So, Route 28 Motors, is, is that the one that we've, uh, we've had some issue with in the past, Mr. Gilbert? It is, yes. I can report to the board that I have not received uh, complaints with regard to the number of vehicles on there. My own casual observation, I haven't <coughs> observed the overage that's there. I don't have, you know, a current point in time number at this moment, but as you can imagine, it does fluctuate. <coughs> that request I believe we made to the operator back when this came up in October was when he was expecting a new delivery of vehicles to make sure he was had room for them under his licensing requirements. So. That's the best I can report at the moment, and we continue to keep an eye on the, the location. Well, I'm not going to be voting in favor of this motion, so I do hope that the other two board members will uh, <coughs> be voting in favor of this license uh, so you can continue. But I'm, I'm voting because I want to make sure there's a statement sent strongly that uh, we're not going to accept this to continue on. This has been happening for many years. You've been before this board many, this particular company's been before this board many times. And we've had uh, show cause hearings prior to this in, uh, you know, out of respect to your neighbors, out of respect to the, your license, um, I am, I, I, we need to see a change, a permanent change, and we are not going to go back and forth, you know, after the, we approve this license, if it gets approved this evening, I don't want to come back there two weeks later and drive by and see 40 cars and cars parked in the woods and everywhere else. Um, you know, it's, it's been an ongoing issue, and I think a stance needs to be made, so I'm going to be voting in against the license because I just feel it's been an ongoing problem and it hasn't I haven't seen any improvement it only changes as we get closer to the licensing time so I'm not sure if my other fellow board members feel any different but that's my stance yes do you know the number of cars that you're licensed to sell there yes I do H how many it's supposed to be 24 outside and two inside 26 unregistered vehicles for sale I have assured that I will make sure that it's the number and I've been on top of it. I've had some issues in the past few months, which I brought the last time we were here at the location in North Reading, which the tenants over there went and took my place, offered more rents to the landlord, so I had to pick some cars out. And I've had some family member, my father was ill for a long period and I've been going back and forth out of the so I wasn't around that much. about your father passing and I appreciate that you're going to manage this and maintain the license because I think it's probably abundantly clear at this point from all the meetings and things that you, know, you, do, you do need to do the right thing and, and manage it otherwise we'll be back having you back in having to revoke it having to have a hearing to revoke it Mr. Messier. Uh, I will support the, uh, the license. Uh, however, I, I've been on the board for 14 years, and this issue has come up a number of times. And I think that if it comes up again, the license is going to go away. And you've got to put some effort into maintaining the regulations. So, you got one more chance for me. Okay. So, I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. And I'm voting no. And then we have two abstentions. Mr. O'Leary and Mr. Schultz. Okay. So, the motion, uh, the license passes two to one. Just as a point under rule of necessity, you may have to sign. 
That's fine. I will sign. Just. Huh? That's true. Yep. No, I'll Thank sign. You. I ain't playing. Okay. Um, Mr. Schultz is coming right back in. Thank you, Mr. Manny for stepping in. Jane, um, we're going to try not to cross pollinate with all this. So, <laughs> if we do, just check us. Uh, we got a lot of people flying around. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the filing class three licenses to expire. Please call yours. Uh, January 1, 2019, subject to all regulatory department requirements. Brian Duchak, DBA National Sales. I have a motion and a second by Mrs. Minupelli. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Any abstentions? None? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following automatic amusement device license to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements, Kitty's Restaurant, and Papa Gino's. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Mr. Chairman, I move to renew the following delivery licenses to expire December 31, 2018, subject to all regulatory department requirements. That's Metro Town Car. I have a motion and a second. Second. Second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And we're up to appointments now? Yep. J just as an aside, could, oh, never yeah. mind. I'll, I'll talk with the time minister in about it. We're good. Okay. Uh, we're up to appointments, reappointments. State ethics liaison. Mr. Chairman, I move to reappoint Barbara Stats as the State Ethics L Commission liaison for a term to expire on December 31, 2018. Second. Second. I got a motion and a second. Any more discussion? Not heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to reappoint uh, Marion McKay as town treasurer for a term to expire on December 31, 2018. Second. I got a motion and a yes, second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. She was feeling pretty good. She left. <laughs> she had the vote. Should the votes? <laughs> uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination of following names for reappointment as members of the Conservation Commission for terms to expire on December 31, 2020. And there's one opening uh, Martin Weiss, incumbent, and Timothy Allen, incumbent. I have a motion. Well, there's actually second. two opens. Yeah. Second. I have a second by Mr. O'Leary. Any discussion? Uh, actually, they're, they're, they're yes. both incumbents and they're both uh, up for reappointment. Actually, there's actually two openings. Um, so I would recommend, again, uh, both of these uh, individuals are long-serving members of the Conservation Commission uh, who have <coughs> stepped up to the plate, done the job, and I would uh, recommend uh, reappointment for both gentlemen. So, Jane, Frank, that's two. Two openings. Two openings. Okay. Thank you, Mr. O'Leary. Any other discussion? Thank you, Mr. Weiss and uh, uh, Mr. Allen for continuing their, their support. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Um, Mr. Chair, do we do a roll call vote? Yes, we do. On the Hillview? Um, on, all on all appointments. Uh, but we haven't. Yeah, I guess so. we do. Well, we haven't been. Uh, we didn't do any tonight. I believe when we have more candidates than openings, we've done a roll call. The board's practice has been to do a roll call vote, but when there hasn't been. Right. Well, a contested yeah. appointment, I don't believe this is. The motion says one opening. Is it two openings? It's, it's two openings. Two. Okay. It's, it's two openings. Jane yes. corrected it. Sorry, done. to clarify that. So then we, I get that we're fine because we're. But for the next one, you will need to. Mr. Allen yeah. and Mr. Allen. We're okay on that, Mr. Allen? Yes. On what? Conservation? Yeah. No. Yes. Yeah, so we'll we'll have good. the roll call vote? Totally. Yep. We're good. For Hillview, you will. Hillview, Hillview will have the roll call. That I, I assume we did. Yes. We have five for three on Hillview? Correct. Correct. Okay. Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination of following names for appointment, a reappointment appointment to the Hillview Commission for a term to expire on December 31, 2020. There's three openings. Charles Carucci, incumbent. Francis Hatchie, incumbent. William King, incumbent. Peter Antonucci, 
and Robert B. Gilchrist. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion from Mr. O'Leary? Mr. Chairman. Uh, again, I would like to uh, recommend to the board, highly recommend that the three incumbents get uh, reappointed. Uh, all three of these gentlemen, Mr. Crucci, Mr. Hatchie, and uh, Mr. King, have been working very hard. And as everybody is aware on the board, uh, we've been in a transition period and a challenging period at the Hillview. And uh, these gentlemen have put in the requisite amount of time, requisite amount of time and effort um, to maintain the stewardship of the Hillview Commission. And uh, again, they cer certainly deserving of reappointment. Again, the other two gentlemen, uh, Good candidates. Uh, we'd like to uh, again uh, keep their resumes on uh, record so that uh, should there become a vacancy, uh, they would be considered at a later date. So I'd recommend uh, Mr. Carucci, Mr. Hatchie, and Mr. King. Uh, right. Again, Any more discussion? by the way, in consultation with the chairman, uh, Mr. Stack. Same recommendation. Any other board member have a discussion? Any more discussion? I just want to say that. Yeah. I want to thank them for their time. I think your decision uh, bringing in Mr. Yeba's group at Tees Tavern, for example, is I, I like going to the establishment. I've enjoyed it very much. I think it's been a great addition to the Hillview. And I hope more people in the community come out and use it because I think it's one of the best places around. So you guys did a great, great selection there. All right. Roll call. Oh, yes. Real, real quick, I just want to point out, I thank anyone for applying and volunteering to, to do this, even though you only pick three. There's five great people that applied in the Absolutely. And again, we'll keep yeah. their applications on file and uh, keep in contact with them. And again, if something else opens up where we think their skill sets are, uh, uh, would be useful, we'll certainly contact and reach out to them. Yeah, there's plenty of other committees, too, that can use the support <coughs> if um, they're still interested in <coughs> doing something else other than Hillview. We certainly can use the assistance. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Uh, roll call. Oh, roll call. Sorry, that's right. Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Carucci, Mr. Hatchie, and Mr. King. Mr. Mosseri. Mr. Carucci, Mr. Hatchie, and Mr. King. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Carucci, Mr. Hatchie, and Mr. King. Mr. Minupelli. Mr. Carucci, Mr. Hatchie, Mr. King. And the chair votes Mr. Carucci, Hatchie, and King. That's unanimous. Next. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination of the following names for reappointment as members of the Water Commission for terms to expire on December 31, 2020. There are two openings, uh, Vincent Ragucci and Andrew B. Street. And they're both incumbents. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Again, Mr. Chairman, uh, Mr. Ragucci and Mr. Street are both incumbents. Uh, Mr. Ragucci uh, in particular has been a long-serving member, sometime all by himself. <laughs> uh, Mr. Street uh, was willing to step up to the plate and. Uh, Volunteer and again, they're so worthy of uh, consideration and reappointment. And again, appreciate their efforts, and they're going to have a little bit more work to do uh, in forthcoming months as we uh, come to a final decision and fruition as to uh, our efforts and make the final determinations as to how we're going to have potable water uh, for our community. So I appreciate their efforts and their willingness to serve. Any other member comments? No, the time is critical uh, for their involvement, so we would thank them for re-upping their time on the Water Commission. So if there's no other comments, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Okay, Mr. Chairman, I move to place the nomination of following names for reappointment as members of the Historic District Commission for terms expired December 31, 2020. There are three openings, there are four candidates. Uh, the first candidate is Mark Hall, incumbent. Second is David Hamm, incumbent. Third is Paul Chapman, incumbent. And fourth is Peter Antonucci. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Yes. Uh, I will be recommending that the, uh, the board uh, recommend uh, the incumbents continue to do a good job on the historic commission. So this will be a roll call vote. Any discussion? Any more discussion? We'll start with Mr. O'Leary. Uh, Mr. Hall, Mr. Ham, and Mr. Chapman. Mr. Masseri. Mr. Hall, Mr. Ham, Mr. Chapman. Mr. Schultz. Mr. Hall, Mr. Ham, and Mr. Chapman. Mr. Mr. Hall, Mr. Ham, Mr. Chapman. And chair votes Mr. Hall, Mr. Ham, Mr. Chapman. Unanimous. Thank you. <laughs> Next. 
Mr. Mr. Chairman, I move to place a nomination the following name for reappointment as member of the Historical Commission for a term to expire on December 31, 2020. There are two openings. Uh, Ms. Patricia Romeo is incumbent and Francine Coughlin. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Second. And who's the liaison? As, uh, My recommendation uh, as liaison to the historic commission will be for the incumbent and the uh, Francine Coughlin, who is a new member, would be a new member. New member. Great. So this would be a roll call vote. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. One more thing, Michael. Uh, I, I think we should re <coughs> recommend the uh, and acknowledge the long-term uh, uh, seat uh, that Happy DeFronzer uh, played on the historic commission through all these years, and uh, yes. I wish to thank her for all her efforts. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. Don't need a roll call. We don't need a roll call. Two for two. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Yes. <coughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to appoint uh, KP Law as Town Council for North Reading for a term to expire December 31, 2018. Second. Any second. Any discussion? They do a great job for us. Back. And I think dollars and cents wise, well worth it. Well, I, well, we'll have to say, going through this uh, transaction for 104 Lower Road, we really truly saw the value of KMP uh, when we went through that process. So I will say, I, I mean, certainly sold on their services. Uh, Mr. Gilberto, you want to you have anything you want to say? Or uh, just, uh, I'll add, just that per the board's request, the next agenda item is to approve an agreement. So if the appointment goes through they've given us an agreement a, a fee agreement as was requested the motion would authorize the chairman to sign the uh, agreement I'm sorry the clerk to sign the agreement clerk. excuse right. me thank you good okay. mrs. Minipel have we ever signed one of those with them before not to my knowledge yeah. years ago when Len Copeman I think first came in I think we did but that was a long, long time ago I would say just keep it as it is. I think that was their way of informing us that they're increasing their rate by five dollars an hour, and then in the beginning of the year it's going to go up another five dollars, right? Well, they gave us a notice by communication that that was happening, but if my understanding from the board's discussion was that the board wanted to see a, a fee agreement. I don't think that they will require us to sign one. No, it was the board's recommendation. Sign. <laughs> or not. <laughs> okay. I got a motion. I have a second. Any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Unanimous. Okay. In that regard, Mr. Chairman, I move to approve the agreement with KP Law for Town Council Services and authorize the clerk of the board to sign the agreement. Second. We have a motion. I have a second. Any discussion? None heard. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Who was the second on that one? Me. Mr. O'Leary. Keep up, Mr. Schultz, please. <coughs> <laughs> you <work> at me. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I move to ban the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Second. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Chairman, I move to reconfirm the vote of September 18, 2017, designating the following positions as having special municipal employee status pursuant to MGL Chapter 268A, Parks and Recreation, the Infant Toddler Instructor, After School Instructor Coach, Summer Program Instructor Coach, Summer Program Director, Summer Program Assistant Director, Summer Counselor, for the Police, Matron and Crossing Guard, Counsel on the Agent, uh, van driver and to add the following positions having special municipal employee status pursuant to MGL chapter 268 a finance committee recording secretary second I have a second discussion mr. Gilberto. mr. chairman through you so uh, as some as the board members may recall back in uh, September we reviewed with the board this prospect of going through the special municipal employee status designation 
and really it's uh, something that we've identified for positions that are part-time in nature uh, that we traditionally have had a difficult time of recruiting candidates for the work because they are part-time in nature and we often have found that after in some cases extensive advertising uh, efforts um, it's uh, employees of the town in another capacity whether it be in town hall uh, or uh, in a public safety department or for that matter in the school department who may have the capacity and the willingness to participate uh, and in that vein uh, the recommendation and you have a comment in there from the prepared by the human resources director that, which reflects the comments provided by the various departments who were initially approved uh, indicating that so far they've found that the system seems to be uh, to be working in addition to that we have a, con a position that we're recommending be added and this is a part-time finance committee recording secretary position the hours are generally constituted by uh, budget meetings in the evenings uh, during the budget season with occasional meetings outside of that uh, and uh, again having advertised that position on and off for nearly the entire year if I remember correctly uh, we identified two candidates and uh, one of the candidates was heavily qualified for the job but ultimately opted to withdraw his name for consideration we have another candidate who is an, uh, a part-time employee in another department uh, and this work would not conflict with that Any uh, questions for our HR director of town administrator? Mr. O'Leary. Uh, again, it's just important to note that uh, a special employee designation, and Bob, you can correct me if I'm wrong, or articulate a little further, but it goes with the position, not necessarily the individual. That's correct. So we are designating these positions townwide as special employees, and that has a little different connotation or effect. And again, it doesn't go with the individual, it goes with the, with with the, with the, the title. That's correct. So um, generally, we used, to, we used to be pretty stingy with these, but I'm sorry, Mr. we used to be pretty stingy with uh, the designations. Why, why was that? Was um, conflict of interest. Yeah, generally conflict of interest. Basically. Right. It's against the law, so taking a vote like that is beyond an ordinary vote. It's an extraordinary vote, too allow something that the law doesn't otherwise allow, unless we vote to allow it. And the main reason for this is because we haven't been able to reach the right We've been unable to attract uh, candidates in some positions. We've been unable to maintain candidates for the positions. Um, the Finance Committee Recording Secretary is one that has probably the most flexibility as I look at it, uh, in that the work is in the evenings, and yet we still have struggled to identify candidates for the position uh, historically. Yes. And it really wasn't until a um, couple of years ago that we were able to fill it with a, a part-time person here the, uh, and, and, and maintain it. That person was preceded by another part-time person uh, who was working. And this, there, there's been a bit of a practice that we're trying to make sure we comply with the law under. No, I, 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 I understand that one makes total sense, and that mm -hmm. would come with a, some sort of a stipend or something to, to pay for that. An hourly rate, right, yes. I think that the other issue being just because it's designated as a special municipal employee, whoever it is, if it's an individual that's already employed here and then accepts employment, because that was my understanding was they were seeking people from the school department to fulfill these summer positions. That was what I recollect was going on. So uh, it's correct that we received a candidate from the school department, but I, I don't think that, that we were seeking them from there. I think that's where we, after advertising more broadly, that that's where we end up ended up finding a candidate for and, the position. And for the summer programs, that's where most of the applicants were coming from. That's correct, yes. So they would still have to meet the requirements or comply with the requirements of the re regulations, not do one job while they're on the other, not do that job while they're supposed to be doing I, I'll defer to the human resource director, but my understanding is yes. Yeah. Through, through the chair, if we would not hire them, we would not hire them normally. This is not, we're not setting aside jobs yes. for people otherwise situated. We're expanding the pool to include them. But once they're included within that pool, they are under the same, uh, restrictions in terms of if we wouldn't have hired them before we're not hiring them now 
it just it broadens the pool. Um, if, for example, uh, with the van driver position, we have two van drivers, both are part time. One has the des you know, the position has the designation. One utilizes it, one does not. Uh, if you don't um, re up this for the coming year, because that was the condition in September that we revisit it in December, we'll terminate the employment of one of them. Uh, similarly, when it comes time for you know, the, the natural sort of uh, time shift is a lot of times with school department employees, but that doesn't mean that a qualified person not working for the school department would be shut out, not, not whatsoever. So I had a question in these positions. Is it um, against the rules or the law to post these positions on a social media site? We post them on the, one of the conditions is we post them on, no, the short answer is no, but we post all positions uh, on the town website under the HR department. And that was one of the things actually as we started to move into this, at one point uh, when I first got here, the HR department had certain jobs posted and some of the other departments had things posted, uh, Parks and Rec had their own posting for jobs. And they're welcome to do it in addition to, but the first place that people are typically are looking for jobs at the HR department, part of the website. So all jobs are posted there. These part-time jobs were there somewhat uh, limited hours and not a, a tremendous commitment. Mr. Schultz, it, would this be something you could actually post on the North Reading Community Connection? Yeah, when is it open? I amount of think it's a good idea. Yeah. 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 Certainly I, could I put think a link. We should, you know, maybe we can so we actually it. are in the process of having a, a board or a town hall Facebook page to be able to reach out to the community. We've been all putting that together now, Mr. Gilberto's. So that community mm -hmm. connection yep. has thousands of people. A lot of reach. A lot of reach. And the people that are looking for part-time jobs to supplement when their kids are in school, especially, mm -hmm. um, that are looking for those types of jobs. So just an idea that I want to And I'm sure it would help us with the full-time positions as well. Yeah, so every, every huge chance reach. we can get to get a qualified candidate, yeah. all the better. That, yeah. that was my issue too. I, but I think the director spoke about that because I know an awful lot of people, for parents, for example, who are in the position to be able to do something part time like that, that they just weren't able to find the job listings or the job postings. So I think that trying to have a greater outreach is, is really the key there because there's a lot of people in the community that want to do something. And my initial concern was centralizing it to make sure that yes. it was consistent and that everybody knew you go there and it's there. Yes. Yeah. Beyond that, uh, in terms of, in fact, one of the, one of the things we uh, did was um, have the departments be a little bit more responsible for advertising their positions beyond that. Uh, that way they'd be a little bit, have more skin in the game, be a little bit more accountable for that. But yes, anything social media that can certainly uh, increase our reach and increase our pool and the depth of that pool, most welcome. And Parks and Rec too, they do have a great social media presence. Yep. So. Thank you. So I have a motion to second. We've had discussion. So any more discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Thank you. Thank you for spending the evening with us. I go over that. <laughs> Is uh, we have one more thing, or is that it? Uh, we're That's on to uh, TA's report. TA's report. And the only item I was going to report on was the uh, bond rating assignment, which I did earlier, so I had no further comment. Okay. I think this would be a good chance to maybe take a few minutes to talk about the Ring and Ride program real quick. Sure. If you wouldn't mind. Uh, sure. I mean, I have the update here, but... Yeah, I'm happy to, happy to speak to it. So uh, just a reminder for the community, we do have... Uh, transportation option here in North Reading, uh, the Ring and Ride program. It's available through the Merrimack Valley Regional Transit Authority, and it is available um, to provide transportation to medical appointments for senior citizens and for disabled veterans of any age. Um, we've had some usage uh, uh, over the past, uh, the first basically month of the program. It's 25 rides, I believe, we provided with, uh, amongst nine riders. We'd love to try to boost that number up to get some more usage and uh, encourage people to, to look at that as an option for medical transportation for them. It's low-cost medical transportation, and we are paying for it to be available. Um, we'll continue to push out the information to make it available to, uh, to folks, uh, but it, it's a great option for somebody who needs transportation um, from here in North Reading. 
And you know, we welcome feedback. Uh, certainly feel free to contact my office if there's something uh, a need that somebody sees in the program that they'd like to see fulfilled otherwise. So we're, we're all ears, for sure. Now, I have received some feedback, especially some residents wanted to get some transportation for their parent to maybe go visit someone. And unfortunately, we're not at the stage yet where the, the ride is set up for that. It is truly focused on medical appointments only at this time. Uh, but as the uh, town administrator mentioned, we've only had 25 rides focused around nine customers. There's been 24 cancellations already, and there's been two no-shows. So I'm okay with the cancellations. I mean, we, medical appointments change, and I understand. But I want us, to, if we could all try our, our best to try to continue to get the outreach and get people aware, because I constantly run into people, and they have no idea it's still out there. So whatever we have to do uh, to get the fullest reach on this, any suggestions any of the board members have, uh, certainly your, your social media uh, reach would be helpful as well. But uh, 25 riders since October 20, 25 rides since October 31st. And that's as of effective line of December 1st. So yeah. almost one a day, but yeah. we're getting there. Mm -hmm. but thank you. And nothing else, Mr. G no, sir. Mr. Schultz, why don't you start us off this evening? Uh, I just want to wish everybody, we're entering the holiday season, wish everybody out there a great holiday season. And uh, um, very, again, Mr. Chair, you are to be commended for the lake work you did on the Pol Pulte Homes land deal. That's a monumental project. It's great for our town. I think our next task is to figure out how to spend that money. We're, we're going to get returns year over year on that money, not just spend it on a one-off project. So. Um, I think we're in a great situation, and um, again, all you folks that were here before me, uh, you guys did a heck of a job on this, and I commend everybody here. Thank you. Thank you. Mrs. Minipelli. Sure. I'd, I'd, I'd want to say the same thing, and just uh, thank you. Thank Mr. Gilberto, tenacious for your tenacity, for your leadership, for steering this ship till we get to this point, and thank the board members. I'm proud to be a part of that with the board and um, and also 25 rides since that time frame is good. It's, it's good. It's, no, it's good. It's 25 rides that those yep. people might not have been able to get. So it, it's going to, it'll get there and it'll, it'll, uh, it'll, the word of mouth will spread and people will start using it more. So that's another excellent service that um, it's something good to could, yeah, it's good 32 to be days so it's only been operational 32 days yes, yeah. it's 25 rides in 32 days I I'm encouraged yeah. so. that that the, those people could look to that service versus it's the no shows I get a little concerned about so we mm -hmm. want to make sure we limit those because we pay for them when they don't show mr. Masir uh, <clears throat> I'd like to thank you and of course everybody else they contributed to getting this Pulte deal passed and signed. Uh, it's a tremendous effort. It took lots and lots of Great time. Great team effort. As I'm well aware, getting involved with various things. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a great end of the year, but we two other tasks to get done this year. Yes, Michael, you, as you know. <laughs> and that's on that and side of this. The fire team. contract and the DPW yeah. contract. So we're not, uh, well, in the we're water. not quite done in the water. yet. And you guys are working that water. I know you're working <laughs> it day and night. So, uh, so and that's and as big as, if not bigger. And we have the water. Pulpy. That's correct. And we have some challenges as, yes. the, as time evolves. And I know it's but, taken uh, a tremendous amount of time. Yeah. I mean, you and Mr. O'Leary. I don't think, uh, I don't see us not at this point uh, being able to make some kind of a decision in April. Would you stand behind that? I know I have some concerns. Uh, there may be some concerns, but I think uh, we're, we're going to keep everybody's feet to the fire so that uh, we can keep to the timetable that we established. And uh, if there's a need to push it out, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> I did have a question for you, though. Uh, was is Andover, have they scheduled their special town meeting or is it Yes, it's like, it was the 29th of January? January 29th. Is yeah, January 29th, yes. and they've got uh, this article. They've got an article for a re rezoning up off of Dascom Road, and they also have, I think, two other issues relating to medical marijuana or something also on there. And this is a special town meeting. That is that a mixed-use project on Dascom Road? Yes, yeah. mixed-use. Yeah. So. Mr. O'Leary, do you think you, we should participate and around show up for that meeting as a board or... Whatever you need us to do. We're, we're yes, doing, I, yes. Uh, as it gets closer, and uh, I'm sure we're going to have, I'm confident we're going to have some more meetings with mm -hmm. uh, the Andover representatives uh, 
in short order. Uh, so, I, I mean, my expectation is, you know, I think we should have some representation there, and I certainly am planning on attending. So, I, I would say the same thing. Uh, yeah. So, I'll put it, I suggest the board members put that date in your calendar if you can, and uh, you know, whatever we can do to show you uh, support, we should do it. Anything else, Mr. Sarah? Well, we did, uh, we did have a meeting in Boston. Michael, you want to yeah, just the meeting in Boston with the MWRA. I think uh, you know they're they're taking a, a wait and see attitude, to, depending upon what uh, posture we take with the Andover. Uh, we have informed them that again we are uh, considering the Andover proposal. Uh, we're doing our due diligence as we think that it was necessary based upon the uh, um, the proposal that was made to us. Uh, but we also inform them that you know that it's not a done deal, and uh, there's still a lot of hurdles. Uh, to go over with Andovers, but also hurdles associated with uh, their proposal too. But we thank them very much for their cooperation with us up to this point. Uh, uh, we assured them that you know, we were not asking them, them to uh, bid against themselves, and this isn't a, a, a direct competition in relation to, you know, this is what they're offering us, what you're offering us. It's just, uh, you know, at one point in time, they were the only, only show in town, and Andover, uh, at a very late hour, you know, came forth with a proposal that we found necessary to, uh, to consider. They understand that. Uh, they were a little bit uh, perplexed by it, certainly, but uh, and disappointed uh, that we're considering. But that, but they also understand that we have a fiduciary responsibility to the people of North Reading, and it's a big decision that we have to make. They appreciate that, and they, uh, we've been keeping them very well informed and in the loop as to you know where we're at with the negotiations with Andover. We haven't held anything back with the MWRA, and I want to reiterate they've been nothing but uh, helpful. Uh, considerate and um, and I think uh, very generous in relation to the proposal that they offered us and we uh, reiterated that to them the other day um, so they're just going to take a wait and see posture until we let them know you know come April uh, in the meantime they've offered to <coughs> consider, consider also working with us um, to get uh, necessary data for us to make an appropriate decision and that includes uh, the wastewater proposal you know, uh, there appears to be a linkage between the water and wastewater, which is not surprising, uh, as there is with Andover. So, uh, but we need to collect some additional data so that we can make an informed decision. They've committed to uh, continue to work with us to give us the data necessary so that we can be well informed. So, again, I, I thought it was um, a very straightforward and uh, productive meeting uh, where we everybody knows where everybody stands and sits and. Uh, and we continue our good working relationship with them and appreciate all the efforts that they put in. Yeah. Uh, well, thank you for meeting with them. I think it's important that uh, we, we made the time for them. Yeah, I think they appreciated uh, yeah. you know, us maintaining communication. Yeah. There is a little bit of a disappointment. You know, obviously, if we end up going down the end of a path. But, well, it's uh, something we have to certainly give some consideration to because I, I am a strong believer that you know, the Concord Street opportunity to soar, I think, is a very short, could be a short-term opportunity, uh, something we could do in the relatively near future. Um, and if that goes away, if we end up going in a different direction, I think has to be considered in our financial equation. Yeah, I think like we did back on. several months ago, we should take put all the facts on the table, okay. the pros and the cons. And well, thank you. For, we'll make for a decision. For the time scale at which that keep this thing going. And Mr. O'Leary, uh, just a couple of things. Update as far as the restroom concession stand. Uh, the footings yes. and foundations are in, and uh, uh, the change order for the uh, brick overlay has been submitted to them. And now it's just uh, wait for the construction of the the unit. And, and I anticipate you know the end of February or sooner that being delivered. So things appear to be on track. So that's a good thing. As far as the uh, negotiations with Comcast, uh, we've been, uh, Mr. Masseri and myself, along with uh, Ed, Stro Ed Strobe and Kerry Reddington, have been uh, negotiating with the uh, Comcast representative. Um, it, it's been on a roller coaster ride over the last couple of weeks, but uh, as of uh, this morning, it appears to be you know, we're getting very much closer, and we appreciate uh, Comcast's efforts in trying to bring this thing to closure before the end of the year. So. Uh, we should hopefully have more to report in the next week or so. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then uh, 
Verizon has been contacted and that's going to be scheduled for negotiations. Again, their contract expires six months after the Comcast one. And uh, we've already started to set up uh, appointments with them to, to meet. So our next meeting is the 18th. Is there something we have to vote on by the end of the year? Yeah. Uh, not necessarily. Well, if we're close to an agreement, they'll agree to an extension and then so it's not necessary. Okay. You know, but uh, our goal is to have it by the end of the year. If not, there'll be a mutual agreement. Uh, our town council and their council will will draft up an agreement and just agree to an extension. If you need us to have a, a quick meeting or... I don't think it'll be necessary to have a special meeting for that. Very good. Anything else? Although it might be a special meeting to agree that we disagree and we have to go <laughs> to an arbitrator, but, but we're hoping that's not going to happen. Let's hope not. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'd like to just start off by uh, welcoming Pulte to the neighborhood. Uh, Pulte Homes now officially our neighborhood. neighborhood so they are in the community now so we welcome them to the community and I'm sure we'll hear from them but one of the things that I didn't really want to get hung up on while we had everyone here I did send a request forward to uh, through representative Jones and uh, Senator Tar to see if the governor had any interest in us maybe having a, a formal with him and I believe that at some point that we may be requested to be with him in his presence over this deal as you said earlier uh, in your comments, Mr. O'Leary, I think this was a template for the state to probably use as a success story in um, other areas. So when that time comes, if we hear something, either Michael or myself will let everyone know. But I do believe that at some point we're going to be requested to uh, see him and, and celebrate this with them as well. Um, let's see. The only other thing I have left is I have put down a little uh, challenge with the school committee that I wanted to share with you. Mel Webster is uh, with them this evening, putting the same challenge with them. We'd like to have an ugly sweater, Christmas ugly sweater <laughs> contest. Oh, um, they'll definitely win. And uh, so <laughs> next meeting, <laughs> the Bliss Board's going to wear their ugliest ah. Christmas sweater, and they're going to wear theirs, and then we're going to let the community decide who had the, most, the ugliest sweaters. And so we're talking about a Christmas sweater, right? It's, uh, not as long something as it's else. ugly, Bob, you can wear it at the next meeting. That's what we're going to do. We're going to have a challenge. We have a little side bet, but I'm not going to get into that because, you know, between Mr. Uh, and it's only the sweater that's going to be. You don't have to wear a tie next meeting. You have to wear an ugly sweater. I need you to wear pants. Yes, Mr. You have to wear pants. <laughs> I want to make sure that's in the record. And why, and why did you do this? Why not? It's the spirit of the holidays. It's something different to challenge our school committee to have a little fun. In our December 18th meeting, I don't think we're going to have a tremendous amount on the agenda. It's our last meeting of the year. Hopefully we won't have a lot, right? It, we, mostly licenses and reappointments. Yeah, is what which I we expect. got a good chunk done this evening. Yeah. Um, so I'd like to take an opportunity to, you know, if you don't want to, you don't have to participate. But I threw the challenge out there. If you want to participate, <coughs> it would I'm be great. I thought it'd be. I think, I think it's a. <laughs> I thought it'd be a little fun. I think it's fun, but I just wondering what got you into it. That's well, all. you know, the, the school committee is always, you know, we're always uh, challenging them. So uh, we thought this would be a fun challenge. Um, the next meeting, if we have the opportunity for the agenda, I would just like to try to maybe have a quick review of the entire year. So maybe between now and our next meeting, we can maybe put a couple slides up just to kind of review the calendar year and all the things that we've accomplished. Because a lot happened this year. Let's mm -hmm. put aside the Pulte home. There's been a lot. And I think this is a great time of year, especially with the limited uh, agenda items that we have for the next meeting. Just to quick, quickly, cap, quickly capture it and then talk about uh, we have a lot of budget stuff that's going to get going very quickly after the first of the year. I'd uh, we'll like to chat a little bit about that and, and really just wrap up the year. Thank everybody. Okay. Just one more thing, Mr. Chairman. You know, as we say that we have kind of a, a limited agenda, i just like to acknowledge the amount of work that goes into the renewals. The poor Jane over here. Uh, I'll foot stomp that. You know. <laughs> has to go through in order to uh, chase down the renewals and the applications and the applicants. And uh, uh, she's so doing yeoman's work. And so you start the process. And acknowledged you. you start the process in October, right? October 16th. October 16th. Mm -hmm. Oh. And, and it won't well. finish until after the first of the year for those full, few holdovers. That so it doesn't go overlooked, Jane. Mm -hmm. You and Karen both, uh, the work that I know you put in, mainly Jane, I know you The days this. really fast. <laughs> uh, Michael, have we uh, scheduled the uh, Saturday uh, budget meeting yet? 
I believe I have seen it on a schedule for the last Saturday of February. Last Feb no, Saturday of February. So I don't have it down, and I like to get that scheduled. So, I don't so make looking at my calendar, the 24th, if I understand it correctly. Saturday the 24th, if I my, I'm correct. Thank you. So I have one thing um, left that I just wanted to mention to the community. If you haven't participated, I had an opportunity to see the, um, the North Reading Mass High School Maskers doing the play right now. It just uh, took place Friday and Saturday this past weekend, and they have two more shows uh, this Friday and Saturday, 7.30 on Friday and 4 p.m. on Saturday. And I believe there are still tickets available. Maybe not for Friday, but for Saturday, I believe there's some availability. I did have the opportunity to go outstanding uh, once again, and I really hope the community uh, has to, if you have the time to go, to, to go and see the play. The kids do an amazing job. Go on Friday. Looking forward so, to it. Good. Yes, Mr. Good. You remind me, Mr. Chairman, uh, one party that was not present today, if I didn't say it earlier, for the announcement earlier, Pulte Homes of New England, uh, purely because of the scheduling uh, matter of not being able to be here, um, they clearly are invested in the community and expressed a desire to attend at a future meeting to talk a little bit about the project. So I told them that we would work that out amongst you and I to have them on an agenda to talk about their project um, and, and what it may offer folks in the community. Yeah, that would be great because I've been asked, uh, a lot of people have asked me about the details and mm -hmm. I'm really not sure and they build schedule and when they plan to get going, but I, sure. based on my discussions with, with them over the last few weeks, I know they now it seems like they're ready to go pretty soon. Yes. Uh, but we don't have any details. They spent yet. the money. They better get going. Yeah. Yeah. Clock's ticking for them now. Hmm. Okay. Thank That's you. all I have, so I'll take, uh, if nobody else has anything else, I'll take a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to adjourn. Second. Motion to second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous.